commander of the 1st Infantry Division in Iraq, Major General John Batiste, might qualify now as a phony soldier, given that he had the courage to end his 31-year military career in order to speak out on behalf of soldiers and those families that Howard just mentioned. General Batiste, now an advisor to VoteVets.org, kind enough to join us now. Thank you for your time tonight, sir. Yeah, good evening, Keith. How do you respond to the Limbaugh comment, and we're going with that original one from yesterday, that, that service members who advocate U.S. withdrawal from Iraq are, quote, phony soldiers? If a two-time combat veteran, first Gulf War, Operation Iraqi Freedom, uh, one of the two U.S. brigade commanders in Bosnia during I-4, 12 months that began in December of 1995, 33-month commander of the 1st Infantry Division with duty in, in Kosovo, Turkey, and 13 months combat operations in Iraq, West Point graduate, uh, son of a career infantry soldier, and son-in-law of a career special forces soldier. Uh, if that's the definition of a phony, I don't get it. You know, the fact is that more than 70 percent of this nation does not agree with the current strategy in Iraq. And I'm here to tell you that our Army and Marine Corps are a reflection of the society from which they came and the same percentages exist there. General, if, uh, if Mr. Limbaugh was trying to be genuine today when he claimed that he had been referring just to the one you know, actual phony soldier guy pretending to have been a soldier, did he not sort of uh, dismiss any validity to that argument when he added more actual soldiers, including uh, Congressman Murtha, the, the, de the decorated Vietnam vet, to his list? Oh, absolutely. That's exactly what he did. And, and Congressman John Murtha joins a, a whole range of great elected officials, uh, like Senator Chuck Hagel from Nebraska uh, and Congressman Walter Jones from North Carolina, who understand that this nation right now does not have a focused regional or global strategy to defeat worldwide Islamic extremism, and they understand that this nation is not mobilized in any dimension to accomplish what we have to do. I'm a little confused about military protocol here, and perhaps you of all uh, people who's ever been on this show could, could clarify this. If serving or retired personnel question any aspect of the war, uh, they are branded as playing politics and, uh, and, and in quarters that really probably get less or more attention than they deserve being called phony, phony soldiers. But if the president sends a serving four-star general up to the House, up to Capitol Hill, um, as his political spokesman, really being knee-deep in the political process, that's okay, that's his duty? Is, am I missing something here, sir? You know, Keith, I have enormous respect for Dave Petraeus, and he's in, in a tough position. But listen, this administration is using David Petraeus. They well understand that David Petraeus is focused on the military component of strategy in Iraq. What they're missing is that there is no regional or global strategy to defeat worldwide Islamic extremism. And by the way, al-Qaeda exists in about 60 countries in the world, not just Iraq. It's disingenuous. It's putting David Petraeus in a horrible situation. And the results have been what we've seen. It is. Uh, it solved nothing. It uh, the Petraeus part of this, not the not the surge. We're separating those two subjects out, but just Petraeus's role as a politician all of a sudden has uh, has served no one well. Uh, General John Batiste, a veteran of both uh, the Iraq wars. Great thanks. Have a good weekend, sir. Thank you, Keith. Our special.